Watch you guys, got another video here for you. I've had quite a few people asking me, can I take a look at Windows X Lite? Now, Windows X Lite does quite a few different builds like Windows 11 and ultra light versions. They also do Windows 10 and the special editions and some registry tweaks. Now, my stance towards these particular types of builds is never changed. I would never recommend anyone ever downloads any of these builds. And the simple reason being is because they've been modded by other people. That means they can contain malware. I'm not saying they have malware, but I'm just saying that they could contain malware, backdoors and other things like that. And that's why this guide is provided for informational purposes only. I'm not responsible for any damage to your computer or loss of data or any other consequences that may result in you following this video. Now I'm gonna be doing this in a virtual machine in a test environment. I would never install this on my main system. So here is our ISO file. I'm gonna create a bootable USB flash drive using Rufus and then I'll install it. Now I'm gonna be installing this on an actual virtual machine so I don't really need to use the bootable media. But if you did put this onto a main machine, then this is what you would obviously have to do. The problem with these I have is that they are modded and that means components have been removed and things have been added and that means that could be risky uh, using this on your main pc now these are super lightweight and you can get the same results of all of this using other methods and doing it yourself so here they're asking you to install it with windows defender off or on and again if you turn it off I'm not sure if this is removing it completely or whether it's going to be, you, you know, just disabling it. I really don't know. We'll take a look. But I'm going to go with leaving it on for this. And remember, like I said before, this is in a virtual machine, so it's in a safe environment. So it should look something like this. It looks very clean, as you would expect. I'll just go through some specs here so you can see them. Background processes, there's only 12 running on this system. Let's come down a bit and you can see the Windows processes are only 45. So they've got that down quite a bit. Looking at the utilization here, that is pretty low. So if you're on a low end system, it should help if you are looking to use something like this. Processes again are 59 total. Looking at the memory right here, we've got the committed memory, which is 1.2 gigabytes out of 17.2 gigabytes. And you can see in use is 1.4 gigabytes. Now there's quite a few of these doing the rounds on the internet. You've got Tiny11, you've got this version here and a bunch of other ones that are literally creating ISOs for you to download and install on your PC. Like I said before, it is a security risk and I wouldn't recommend it. And that is why I never share uh, Windows ISO files with people. The menu has been changed right here, as you can see. And it also adds some utilities in here so you can add in some other features. For instance, you can see Xlight tools there. That's got a bunch of other tweaks and features that you can add to it. Like say, for instance, the Microsoft Store or you can re-add Microsoft Edge because all that's been taken out. You can see there is a local account pre-installed here. You can even change the name because they give you a little script which will allow you to change the username to whatever you like. And you'll notice that it's not been activated. So this is not a pre-activated version, which is also a good sign. That means you would have to activate this version of Windows yourself. Now, the problem with all of these tweaks is will they get put back after a Windows update or after a feature update? And it's possible. And this is the thing. You download these, you install them on your computer, and uh, basically you're taking a lot of risk you can do a lot of this stuff yourself. I've made tons of videos showing you how you can turn features off in group policy or using batch files or scripts or any of that sort of stuff. But again, like I've said before, using the group policy editor on Windows 11 Pro is the way to go. They've even paused the Windows updates right here. As you can see, it's paused to 3000, which is a long way away. And again, I would never advise you to turn off Windows updates altogether because that is also very risky. So looking at the policies that have been set on this thing, you can see some of these have been turned off, as you would expect. Uh, they're not all turned off, but a majority of them have been turned off here. 
But again, these are set by policies which you can either do in a registry or you can do them in a group policy. As you can see, location has been turned off. And coming on down, some of these ones down here have not been disabled. They're still on, so you'd have to turn them off if you wanted to. But again, it just seems like they've, uh, you know, de-bloated it quite heavily and basically done a few tweaks to make it that process count go down. And you can do that with a couple of registry tweaks anyway without using someone else's ISO file, which is what I would probably recommend you do. Now, they have offered some X Lite tools on here, so you can enable some uh, features like a browser because you don't have a browser on here because it's been taken off. So there's some other features which we'll take a look at in a second. Of course, all the Copilot and all the other bloat that comes with Windows 11 has been removed and all recall and stuff has been disabled. So I'm pretty sure there's been a quite a bit of tweaking going on to get to this level. But again, like I said, I would not recommend anyone download and use it on their main PC. So let's take a look at the X Lite tools here. I'm just going to open up this folder so you can see. And here are the uh, useful little tools or scripts that you can use to either go for optional features. There's also the File Explorer transparency turn off. And we've also got turn on that feature, the search feature, uh, Winero tweaker, and also Windows Firewall off or on. We've got the Windows Print Spooler on or off, depending on whether you've got a printer. So if you wanted to turn it on, you could cl click on this and it will enable your print spooler and that's it that is pretty much it you can turn on the windows update or turn it off right there because it's off at the moment but depending on what you want to use it for let's just go into here this is going to give us some other options like wallpaper changing and also some windows uh, tweaks i can see web browsers you can see the microsoft store they've even put a link for that inside here or a file inside here so you don't have to go untin for it it's there for you. Whether you want to use Firefox, Edge or Chrome, they've dropped those in there as well. And again, there's some other features on there. So it's a pretty nice little tidy uh, build for messing around with in virtual machines. But again, like I said, I couldn't recommend using this as a uh, daily driver, I'm afraid. And even if it's open source where you can see all the code, there may be some files inside that ISO that they're not telling you about that will trigger an install and run in the background without your knowledge. So that's why I don't recommend these things. Anyway, I think that is going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightsetcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support, including Wrestling Face, who has just rejoined the YouTube membership program. Anyway, I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.